made just tremendous progress over the last several years uh, with uh, Microsoft. You know, it started back in 2015 where we you know, cross-certified hypervisors. Um, and that's kind of a basic, you know, let's work together. Uh, over the last couple of years, it's truly blossomed into a really good partnership where, you know, I think they've, and we've both gotten over this, you know, Linux versus Windows thing, and, you know, when I say we've gotten over, I think we both recognize, you know, we need to serve our customers in the best possible way, uh, and that clearly means is two of the largest infrastructure software providers working closely together. And what's been interesting as we've gone forward, we find more and more common ground about how we can better serve our customers, whether that's, you know, what might sound mundane, but it's a big deal, SQL Server on RHEL and setting mm -hmm. benchmarks around that, right. or .NET running on our platforms, now all the way to really being able to deliver a hybrid cloud with a seamless experience with OpenShift from, you know, on-premise to, to, to Azure. And I mean, ha having Deutsche Bank on stage, 25,000 containers running in production, moving back and forth to Azure. Sure, and I think it's more building on what I talked to, to you about uh, a year ago. Uh, if I remember last May, May of 2018 in San Francisco. So I was espousing very heavily, look, the world's going to move towards containers. The world has already embraced Linux. This is the time to have a new architecture that enables hybrid, much along the lines that Jim and all of the clients, as well as Ginny and Satya were talking about on stage yesterday. So you put all that together and you say, that is what we mentioned last year, and we were clear, that is where the world is going to go. Mm -hmm. Nice step forward a few months from there into October of 2018, and on 29th of October, we announced that IBM intends to acquire Red Hat. Mm -hmm. So then you say, wow, we put actually our money where our mouth was. We were talking about <laughs> right. the strategy, we were talking about Linux, containers, uh, OpenShift. The partnership we announced last May was IBM software products together with OpenShift. That is, uh, we already believed in that. Mm -hmm. But now this allows us coming together. It's, it's more like a marriage than sort of lose uh, partners uh, passing each other in the middle of the night. We are so excited and, and you know, ha having put in all the time, part of this is representing all the work the team has done and the communities have done. When you think about all the work that goes into a Linux distribution, it is everybody. It's the communities, it's the partners. So we released the Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 beta in November, mid-November. We've had 40,000 downloads of that beta since November people who have provided feedback and comments, suggestions, all of that fed into what we've released today as the Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 general availability. So it's a big day and, and part of it is we're just so proud of how we've done it and what we've done and we've really redefined what an the value of an operating system with Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8. Our uh, tech transformation started about 10 years ago. I've been CIO for the company about 10 years. And frankly, the first five years were just fixing the basics. So getting in place what we'd call world-class systems, uh, doing a bunch of stuff on resilience and security and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and the other thing, and this is the dramatic change, you know, 10 years ago when I joined the company, we were 85% outsourced uh, to managed surface vendors. So I had technology people that basically were signing contractors and managing service agreements. I, we didn't have technology DNA. Um, and so, you know, over those uh, five years and, and a full 10 years actually, we've been doing a lot about just insourcing and rebuilding our technical uh, muscle, if you like. So now we're, we've gone from 85% outsourced to 90% insourced. Mm -hmm. So we run, build, and manage our own. Uh, we're, we're now a technology company. Yeah. And, uh, and five years ago, we had a, had a real uh, big uh, shift. And, you know, we were, we were closest to what was going on in China. And so probably saw this uh, before many, many of the other banks uh, saw this around the world, uh, of what Alibaba was doing with Ant Financial and Tencent and this whole just, just complete disruption of how customers interact with the banking industry. So we got an early lead on this digital uh, transformation. And really for the last five, six years have been doubling down on building a pure uh, digital offering, uh, and, and we see ourselves as a technology company providing banking services, not as a bank with some technology department in the back end. Open source is the innovation model mm -hmm. going forward, period, end of story, full stop. And I think, as I said in my keynote yesterday, um, you know, leading up to the, the biggest acquisition ever for a software company, not an open source software company, a software company that happened to be an open source software company, I don't think there's any doubt that, that, that open source has won. 
mm -hmm. here, here today. It, mm -hmm. And it's because of the pace of innovation. Yeah, our, our goal is, is to make sure we're supporting those upstream communities. So all of, all of Red Hat software is open source. And we work with a whole community of individuals and companies in the upstream open source software. And we want to make sure that we're not just contributing features that we want, but that we're a good player, that we're helping to make sure those communities are healthy. And so for a number of the projects that we're involved in, we actually assign a full-time community manager, a community lead, to help make sure that project is healthy. So we have someone on everything from Ceph and Glester to Fedora to Kubernetes, um, just making sure the community does well. Yeah, we do a little bit of both. And so a lot of it is responding to the community and that's one of the areas that Red Hat has really excelled is taking what's popular and what's working upstream and helping moving it along, make it a stable product or stable solution that developers can use. But we also have a certain agenda or certain platforms that we want to present. So we start from like various runtimes, to actually contain our platforms, and so we want to have to kind of drive some of that initiatives on our own to help drive fill that need because we hear it from customers a lot. It's like things you're doing are great, but like there's all these projects that need to come together, sort of as a product or unified experience. Mm -hmm. And so we spend a lot of our time trying to bring those things together as a way to help developers do those different tasks and also focus across like a, not just the Java runtimes, which we hit a lot of Java. So you might have. Bake security in, right? I mean, we have a secure supply chain, um, and you, know, uh, you talk about difficult things for RHEL 8, right? Every package that we that comes in, that is, we totally refresh everything from upstream. But when they come in, we have to inspect all the crypto. Mm -hmm. We have to run them through security scans, vulnerability scanners. We've got three different vulnerability scanners that we're using. We run them through penetration testing. So there's a huge amount of work that just comes just to inherit mm -hmm. all that from the upstream. But in addition to that, we put a lot of work into making sure that, well, our crypto has to be FIPS certified, right? Which means you've got to meet standards. Um, we also have work that's gone in to make sure that you can enable a security policy consistently across the mm -hmm. system so that no application that you load on can violate your security policy. We've got NF tables in there, new firewalling. Um, Network-bound disk encryption. That actually, it, it kind of ties in with a lot of the system management work that we've done. So a thing that I think differentiates RHEL 8 is we put a lot of focus on making it easy to use on day one and easy to manage day two. Well, we're not getting there, we're there. Uh, what that allows us to do is to take the reference designs that we have and the testing that we've, we've previously validated with Intel uh, and Red Hat and to be able to snap pieces together. So it's just a matter of what's different and unique for the client and the client situation and their growth pattern. What's great about TrueScale is that in this model is that we can predictively analyze their consumption forward based on the business growth. So for example, if you're using OpenShift and you start with a small cluster for say one or two lines of business, as they adopt DevOps methodologies going from either Waterfall or Agile, we can, we can predictively analyze the consumption forward that they're going to need. So they can plan years in advance as they progress. And as such, the other snap-ins, say uh, uh, storage, that they're going to need for data in motion or data at rest. So it's, it's actually smarter. And what that ends up doing is obviously saving them money, but it saves them time. You know, the typical model is going back to IT and saying, we need these servers, we need the storage and the software and bolt it all together and the IT guys are you know, hair on fire running around already. So, so they can, you know, as long as IT approves it, they can sort of bypass that, that big heavy lift. What we're trying to do is create role models for women and girls who would like to participate in technology but perhaps are not sure that that's the way that they can go and they don't see people that are, are like them, so mm -hmm. there's less tendency to, to join into those type of communities. So, uh, with the community award winner, we're looking at a professional who's been contributing to open source for a period of time, and with our academic winner, we're looking to spur more people who are in um, university to think about it. And of course, the big, the big idea is you'll all be looking uh, at these women as people that will inspire you to potentially mm -hmm. do uh, more things with open source and more things with technology. We've been hearing for many, many years that we definitely need to have more gender diversity in tech mm -hmm. in general and in open source. And Red Hat has kind of uniquely situated to focus on the open mm -hmm. source community. And so with our role as the open source leader, we mm -hmm. really feel like 
we need to make that commitment and to be able to foster that. Right, so, so Sierra is a supercomputer, and what's unique about these systems is that we're solving, there's lots of systems that network together maybe a bigger number of servers than us, but we're doing scientific simulation, and that kind of computing requires a level of parallelism and it, it very tightly coupled. So all the servers are running a piece of the problem. They all have to sort of operate together. If any one of them is running slow, it makes the whole thing go slow. So it's really this tightly coupled nature of supercomputers that make things really challenging. You know, we talked about performance, if, if one server is just running slow for some reason, you know, everything else is going to be affected by that. So we really do care about performance and we really do care about just every little piece of the hardware, you know, performing as it should. So, so we thought, okay, let's take all of these best practices that we have and build more or less a methodology around it. Um, how to make this actually work, like how to do this. We really broke it down into like individual sprints. Do this in sprint one, do this in sprint two, to really have the results within three months, six months, 12 months, whatever the pace is that you want to run on. And then we realized, talking to customers, this by itself isn't still enough. So that's why we started to open up this to an entire ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So we brought ecosystem partners along, like working closely with Red, a lot of other companies, but also system integrators who can help us with bigger uh, projects because we as a company are a software company, so we're not a services or, or consulting mm -hmm. company. And we do support customers in some of those engagements, but if you think of like a really Fortune 500 company, that's a multi-year project that will keep hundreds of busy, uh, people busy. So to recap, we like built the methodology, we built the ecosystem to deliver on that promise at scale. And now the last step was we, um, as we were doing this, we also built like a reference architecture for it. And it was just an internal idea, so how do we like structure this built that reference architecture? And then realized, okay, it's actually kind of like super helpful for customers. So that's, that's why we then decided to open source this reference architecture, this fabric as well, uh, to like the entire software community so they can also use it. So mm -hmm. technically it's really these three pieces. It's the methodology, it's the ecosystem, and it's like the reference architecture that you can work with to help you achieve that goal.